I first stepped foot in the McGaugh YMCA probably in 1988 when I was had been invited by the then board chair Lou Blevins to participate in the business and finance committee of the Y or the finance committee of the Y and we had met at a chamber of commerce dinner and I had been in Evanston for about, lived there then for about uh, maybe 10, 12 years, but had not actually been involved in the Y up to that point. And <clears throat> Lou knew of my affiliation with Northwestern and my professional experience in finance, and she asked whether I would um, come on as a committee member. And that's a very common way at the McGaw Y that people do get engaged at the Y. Um, by being volunteers and having networks in the community and being asked to kind of contribute time and talent um, to Y activities. So it was a little bit unconventional. It wasn't through my kids or through Camp Echo or through many of the other wonderful programs at the Y, but it really came through a professional networking uh, connection. Well, the, the, the Y, the great thing about the McGaw Y is that it really relies on a lot of volunteer support and is very much run and supported by many of its volunteer committees. And that ranges from uh, committees that support uh, youth and government programs, that support Camp Echo, that support uh, marketing and membership efforts, support child care. Uh, support brilliant teams. So there's there's innumerable types of programs and, and volunteer committees um, that usually have board member involvement but also have just individual volunteer involvement. The Finance Committee is responsible for helping guide the board activities with respect to setting its annual budget, looking at its capital plans, looking at its future funding needs, and uh, responsible for helping oversee the preparation of the annual budget and determining how the Y can best spend its resources to fulfill its mission. So the, my first introduction was really to kind of work with some other really dedicated volunteers. Um, John McGuire was the chair at the time and I think uh, he's been a longtime supporter of the Y and really just contributing, kind of working with the, with the staff and management of the Y to kind of help formulate annual operating budgets and determining kind of what the financial needs of the Y are. And <clears throat> during that time when I first joined the board, the Y had been coming through a time of some, a little bit of financial difficulty. Um, they were actually in the process, it almost, I think almost at the time of being in between executive directors. And there had been a lot of membership concern and volunteer concern about kind of the, the status of the budget. And it was really in the preparation between 1988 and probably leading into 19, up until 1992 when the Y first considered doing a capital fundraising campaign. Um, a new executive director was hired under uh, Alice Creeman, excuse me, Alice Creeman uh, succeeded Lou Blevins as board chair. I joined the board full time, I think, in approximately 1990 or 91. And that board, under Alice's leadership, really considered mounting its a capital campaign, which the Y had not done up until that point. And Alice's planning efforts combined with Dick Romano, who had kind of succeeded her as chair, really through the early 90s laid the foundation for a lot of the programmatic and capital expansion that the board, that the board and the Y undertook during that time. I have had, I, I stayed on the board, I had the opportunity to kind of to succeed Dick Romano as board chair, and so I, my board tenure I believe lasted until approximately, I think it was 1997, um, and then I stayed on as a member of the investment committee, and I've occasionally come plugged back in into the uh, finance committee, and have uh, participated in kind of board, emeritus board activities that have been executed during that time, <clears throat> excuse me, and but I have not stayed on as a board member and I concluded my term on the investment committee about two years ago. So in my, probably in total, I was actively involved, really actively involved for about 20 years. I believe, we'd have to check this in the history, but I believe Lou Blevins was the first woman board chair and then succeeded by Alice. So I think <clears throat> they really blazed the trail 
And I then, um, I believe, as I succeeded Dick Romano, I was able to, um, I believe after me, it's the current chair, Vicki Burke, who has been the first woman chair after me. So that's been another was a space of about 10 years or so. But I think the, the one of the real characteristics of my journey involvement in the Y, which has been really characteristic of a number of the volunteers who've kind of risen up to leadership positions, is that through your work on committees, you really get a chance to exercise leadership on behalf of the Y. And the, the process is to really encourage that board committee members then are able to kind of determine their level of interest in terms of being a board member. And then from a board member, you have innumerable, continue to have innumerable opportunities to kind of continue to kind of be involved in the various programs of the Y. And I think it's a great, it's, a, it's probably one of the, the um, great elements of kind of the why movement that it encourages this volunteer leadership on committees. And actually, in term, one of the interesting things when you ask about kind of what happens over 20 years, I mean, I think some of the challenges from a financial standpoint remain the same that we dealt with the first day I walked on the finance committee to kind of more recent times when you ha might have times of more fiscal stress. But I think what's happened is that the Y over those 20 years has grown. Um, we've added two addition, two one major renovation, one major addition. Um, one of the other key elements that we accomplished in the early 90s under the leadership of Dick Romano, um, and in, in that phase of strategic planning, was really also doing some very key investment for the um, residents. Um, the Y is the largest single room occupancy um, facility um, and housing available for uh, men in the north, kind of north of Chicago. And at, in the 70s and 80s, the Y did not have enough resources in order to kind of put in new investments and renovations into the, into the men's residence. And we were able, with some of the financial uh, experience that we had on the board at that time to determine how we could borrow money from the Illinois Housing Development Authority and through some other available housing programs for low-income housing and we were able to successfully get a significant loan that enabled us to kind of re renew and replace and significantly renovate the residents which was a very important part of kind of our service mission and that's a, that's a part of our um, accomplishments during that time that I think is really important to kind of note for the history because that's one of the really key services that the Y and the Y engages in and provides to the community. I think the services that the McGaw Y provide to the Evanston community and to actually to to um, our neighbors on uh, all sides of Evanston have really been felt for its entire history, which is now coming on 125 years. And I think part of what makes it a very special program in the life of the community is its commitment to serving all of the community regardless of income. And I think that's a strong value in Evanston in particular to kind of include participation. And it's not to say that the McGaw Y hasn't had its moments of where it's in its own history where that's been, um, its inclusion has been tested and um, built upon, and chiefly I'm referring there to kind of the, the history with the Emerson Street Y, which had historically served the African American community in Evanston. And I think it's an important part of, an, an example of kind of how the McGaw Y has, um, you know, worked through some very, uh, even as it was dedicated to serving all of Evanston in its early history, the reality was is that there was another Y in Evanston that was a part of that, um, that same history. And I think that one of the things that is typical of, an Evans, of Evanston and the McGaw Y is that it's worked really hard to kind of build bridges to that history, to kind of build upon when, when the Ys merged, to kind of make sure that we sustain the commitments to all members of the community. And I think it's very characteristic of both Evanston, but also um, it's sometimes taken for granted how much that the Y has done uh, in terms of making programs just accessible, of having those programs, and that families have always had it as a as a 
constant or kind of a, a stable foundation upon which to at least kind of begin to have those kinds of programs. So whether it's the middle school clubs or whether it's an opportunity for just having a place to drop in, whether it's a place to provide some other types of social services and be connected, I think throughout the history of the Y there's been that great engagement with the community and whether or not a family has chosen or been able to take advantage of it I think it's always been a, a, a an organization and a location that is really associated with being open to everybody in the community.